was the start of our webinar. It is an extreme pleasure to be hosting this webinar this afternoon. My name is Keon Smith, and I will be your host slash moderator for this particular webinar. Today, we are going to be learning a bit more about the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply, better known as SIPS. And it is an international organization that is serving the procurement and supply uh, profession. And it exists primarily uh, to promote good practices within the industry. We have the team of experts on the call here at this minute that will provide you with information and they're more than ready to answer your many, many questions. So I would encourage you as you are listening to the part to the participants, as you are listening to the presentations, that you make note of the questions you have. So that when we reach to that aspect of our presentation today, you'll be able to ask those questions. If you have to leave for any particular reason, I would encourage you to send your questions uh, in the chat. This event will also be live streamed. So for persons who may not be able to get the responses immediately because of leaving, you'll be able to go back and look at the replay and be able to see your question being answered. We have a very, very simple form of our session today. We're going to be hearing from Dr. Vishnu Durga, first of all, as he intros Action Invest, Caribbean Inc. We'll be hearing from Chris Apana as he tells us all about uh, SIPS. He's the director. You will hear their intro. We'll be hearing from one of the key faculty heads as they talk about their experience and benefits of the program. And we'll be hearing hearing from an international representative of SIPS, uh, Ms. Mandy Wong, as we go along in the program. And of course, we will ensure that there is sufficient time for everyone to be able to ask their questions. All right, so if we have any issue with audio, just reach out, we have first on the call who can be able to assist you uh, in the background whilst we are moving forward. Some very simple rules for our webinar today for those persons who are joining us on our Zoom uh, call in the Zoom room. Can you ensure that your uh, mic is on mute so that there is no background noise to disrupt the presentation? And if you would like to have your cameras on so that you feel as part of the program that's more than welcome as well. If your cameras need to be off for any particular reason, that is also understood. So we will move swiftly into our program today and we will be hearing, first of all, from Dr. Vishnu Darga. Dr. Vishnu Darga is the current chairman of Action Invest Carbon Incorporated. He holds a PhD in entrepreneurship a master's degree and a diploma in mechanical engineering. Dr. Vishen Durga has served on several boards in executive capacity, including serving on the executive and serving as the president of two chambers of commerce here in Guyana, along with serving on the Guyana National Bureau Standards Board. Please welcome Dr. Vishen Durga as he presents his I thank you very much for that introduction, Kion, and a good afternoon for those of you who are in the Caribbean. It's now exactly 12 o'clock here. For those of you who are joining us from further afield, again, welcome to uh, this particular presentation. Um, Action Invest was established in 2014, uh, just before we actually discovered that in Canada we have significant resources. And these resources from 2015 onwards have really allowed us to expand our horizons uh, to be able to really serve the market better. In that process, we have become ISO 9001 certified uh, for training and coaching. We have also uh, now become a TVET certified educational institution. And the drive 
by far really moving closer to providing the skills that are needed by our population is one that has taken us to uh, the partnership with Sabro Consulting. When we were first introduced to the SIPS program, we immediately saw the connection between what this program can do for Ghana and the needs of the industry, in particular, the, the improving the expanding oil and gas industry, because now it is turning into an industry. We're no longer just thinking about uh, drilling, exploration, and production offshore bringing uh, the gas on shore and all those developments that are going to come along with it. Uh, Action Invest Caribbean also has a partnership with NSB Omega, a global company that provides uh, technical staffing and recruiting for many of the operators around the world, including the main operator here in Ghana. So we know that the demand for persons who have training in procurement and supply in logistics, inventory management, warehouse management, um, continues to grow and we are finding it uh, very difficult to find persons with the right qualifications that the industry requires. So it was a very easy decision to collaborate with Stavro Consulting. I myself have known uh, Chris for a couple of years and I know the quality of work that he is, is known for in Ghana. Um, I've met uh, the rest of the team as well and I'm really impressed by the depth and the passion for this particular subject. And that has allowed us at Action Invest to say, well, with uh, such partners on board and such a strong program that is in demand by the industry and not just in oil and gas, because everybody who indirectly works in that industry also needs to step up their game. They also need to be able to manage their supply, change, uh, supply chains effectively and efficiently. And the induced effect that is taking place, the government who is now embarking on massive projects, all these massive projects also require very efficient supply chain management, or else we, the taxpayers in our own country, are going to face significant delays, significant cost overruns that could have all been avoided if people in our population take up the opportunity, especially if this is an alignment with their career goals, to get qualified in a field that allows you to perform at your best. So, uh, Kion, I would like to again thank the understanding of what we are providing to the Guyanese market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Durga, for your remarks and you know, noting the advent of uh, improvements and growth that Ghana is expected to um, experience in the upcoming years. We are going to be moving along swiftly uh, with our program, and we will now be hearing from the director of Starbrook Consulting, uh, Mr. Chris Oppenon. Chris has over 20 successful years experience as a finance and accounting executive in various sectors of Guyana, ranging from the banking, auditing, logging, marine transport, and sugar industries. Chris is a chartered accountant since 1999 and is a fellow of the Association of Chartered Accountants, ACCA. And he also holds an executive diploma in business management along with an MBA from the University of the West Indies. He's also held many executive positions, being the finance, finance controller with the Ghana Sugar Corporation. He would have worked along with the Caribbean Resources Limited and the former Chief Financial Officer slash Company Secretary of the Anson McCall Trading Limited, a position that he's held for 10 years before leaving to become an advisor and consultant. Please welcome Chris as he shares a bit more about Starbucks Consulting Inc. Thank you very much, uh, Keon. Um, I think you've spoken enough on me, so I wouldn't say anything much more on myself. Um, 
I see you've been brief very much well. And thank you, Dr. Durga, for the initial comments. I think that sets up uh, what we are going to discuss and how we align. And we did not compare notes, but basically the objectives of both company are aligned in terms of when we set up uh, Stabber Consulting, we were uh, looking at improving the human capital in Guyana. And that was gonna be done through training and education. And this is our first step that we looked at and we really put our energy. So three years ago when we had this idea, um, we now focus all of our energies in order to get SIPs off the ground because we realize the urgent need in order to get this qualification into Guyana and to educate persons and to, for companies to benefit from this uh, qualification because what SIPs, what this science brings, this education brings is for companies to benefit cost-wise and for employees to even earn more because of with this here now, they can use their knowledge in order to make better decisions and improve. Sour Consulting has a wonderful set of people that makes this tick. There is Larry, who is my uh, fellow shareholder, director in the business. The two of us went into this business and because of education and his passion for education, I myself has been in corporate for many, many years. And Larry himself, but he is also a lecturer. And Larry and myself came together. Uh, Larry quite fortunately or unfortunately was my uh, supervisor, practicum supervisor, and that is how we, we boarded this uh, business. Um, through their connections and his connections, we were able to put, get in contact with a lot more professionals and educators and lecturers and specialists within the industry. And we were able to leverage in order to um, provide SIPs and provide SIPs with industry experience and not just educational experience. So on our team, we have Jairat, who is smartly dressed there. Um, and Jairat is actually our, in charge of everything for us in terms of administration right down to quality. And I say down to quality because quality is up to one of the most things that we want to press in our delivery and our business. So we see that very high in our agenda and that is why we brought in Jairat at a very early stage to ensure that we deliver that quality. Um, alongside Jaira, there is Amrita. Amrita has been doing a phenomenal job on our marketing. This is our for, first uh, webinar and fantastic job in terms of putting it together to her and the team and to marketing it. In addition, we have Trina, who is our lecturer and who is also on our staff. And Trina has a wide industry experience with multinationals and in addition to completing SIPs in her um, studies. We have Kenifa, who is doing a fantastic job in the admin. And you, you can call Kenifa at any time and get any information at the contact numbers that we have. I don't think I've left out anybody, but that is our team. And this afternoon, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you embark on this wonderful journey with us in order for us to lift Guyana to a next level through education and training. Thank you. Thank you very much for those words, uh, Chris. And of course, your parting uh, statement, which you know, indicates that we need to lift Guyana through education and training. And definitely that aligns really well with what uh, Starbro Consulting brings, what SIP brings, and also what Action Invest brings to the table. So this is almost like a marriage that was made or meant to be. Uh, we say made in heaven, definitely this is one of those uh, concepts because it really aligns well with what you're working to do and then also what uh, Action Invest is doing and where that needs to be when it comes to human resource development. So I'm really, really looking forward to hearing from Trina, uh, who's gonna be sharing with us not only as a faculty head, but also her experience as a student going through this particular program. So Trina Amar Singh, she is an internationally certified supply chain professional uh, with the MCI, MCIPS charter designation. And she holds a degree in business management 
with a minor in accounting. Her success has been in contract management, uh, commercial risk management, and logistics that she would have gained through various supply chain and procurement roles. And this spans the energy manufacturing, constructing, construction, sorry, education industries. So I do know that Trina is going to be sharing her wealth of knowledge uh, with us this afternoon as she presents. Please welcome Ms. Trina Amar Singh as she presents to us on the SIPS qualification. Thank you very much, Kian. Thank you. Thank you everyone who's taken the time to join our call um, this afternoon. Um, my role here today uh, will certainly not be in the capacity of facilitator or lecturer, but it's more to share my journey as to how SIPS opened doors for me. My journey with SIPS started around the year 2005, thereabouts. Um, at that time, I was convinced I knew a lot about procurement in those days by being involved in um, purchasing construction type materials. Um, when I did discover SIPS in Trinidad, I decided I, have, I had already got my first degree in business management and was taking the decision at the time, what should I specialize in? Um, given my little experience at that time in procurement and buying materials and so on, it felt exciting, the negotiation, getting discounts, and you know, you're know you all hyped up and you're thinking, wow, this is it for me. So I embarked upon it at the time. Um, supply chain in those days in Trinidad, at least in this part of the world, was not a real profession. It wasn't a profession on the org chart of many um, organizations. So lucky for me, like um, where probably Guyana is right now, it's starting to bud into a really new role, a role that can open a lot of doors and a role that is, you know, cemented in the organizational structure. What I can say is the journey was a lot of fun. I benefited most from the classroom discussions. Um, those discussions not only limit you to your experience that you're gaining on your job, but it also gives you the ability to develop what I call your critical thinking and problem solving muscle. Um, where other people will bring their problems into the room and you, you, know, you, you use what you've learned and you lean on your lecturer at the time to help solve them. Those little discussions I have, I can tell you, has played a very important part in my career um, since then, over the 19 years, I would still refer to some of those discussions in some of my strategy thinking and implementation and development. I have also gained through that the capacity not only to problem solve, but to develop system and processes, policies, procedures. I have worked auditing supply chain um, processes. So it's such a wide um, opportunity it's not about becoming a buyer or only a supply chain manager. Um, just this morning, I was reading an article um, that was kind of directing people getting their degrees into specializing in supply chain now, as opposed to finance or the regular business management. I'll, say, I'll tell you why. With the advent of COVID in the last two years, we have faced empty shelves. We have faced the traffic jam in the Suez Canal, we would have remembered that. We have faced increased prices in food. We have seen manufacturing shut down. And it's all because our people in supply chain and logistics probably wasn't expecting what was coming and we weren't prepared to deal with it and help the organizations prepare. And it is my own opinion as well as most of the um, Harvard Business Reviews, and if you if you start looking and reading, and it's a fantastic reading that you will get as well from SIPS and their uh, magazines, which I still keep very uh, much um, in my reading um, tools, where you will see supply chain now has become the key heels of an organization. Because if you can't have the products on the shelves, you can't sell it. You can't sell it, you can't earn a profit and thereby you can't get paid. And so either a, a country may starve and or you may have prices you know, that are increased to such a level that people won't be able to, you know, to buy. So 
it's not only about developing yourself in becoming a buyer or a procurement specialist. It's about learning in the future, at least in the near future, to deal with risk, to prepare, to understand just in time is not going to work anymore for us, to understand other inventory um, type strategies, probably come up with new ones. It's an exciting time for the profession. I am certainly excited. I feel as if it has been given a renewed life um, despite COVID and all the dark clouds around it. But I think the comment is really kicking off. Supply chain is kicking off in the next five, 10 years. And I think it's it's a great opportunity and it's really right for Diana to take advantage of it. And this is not staying, um, you know, so focused on the economy and the energy sector that's growing. That's just one small part. It's going to be, it's going to equip you with opening up doors that are endless. So I thank Yon for the little time to make that introduction. And I really hope to see, you know, some of you and your staff maybe in some of my classes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trina, for uh, sharing your journey as a student. And as I you know, paid keen attention to what you were saying, it's really making that uh, decision very early on, not just to get into what has been done before, which means the traditional uh, professional qualifications as a finance or a business, not saying that if anything is wrong with it, but really looking for the opportunities that may arise and especially those that can arise from the procurement uh, aspect uh, when it comes to qualifying yourself. And like you mentioned, uh, Trinidad at that time would have been in a very similar position to where Ghana is now. And for the persons you know, on the call is really start thinking about it. Where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself uh, evolving and being able to benefit from our rising economy and becoming self-qualified definitely seems to be uh, that path. I love that you said it brought a renewed life uh, to the profession. I think that's those words alone added a lot of impetus to the content that you were sharing, uh, especially when it comes to understanding that procurement and logistics definitely there's a career that can be um, gathered from this. Definitely. All right. So I think uh, trained persons who are listening can really be inspired by your story, not only providing that story, but also some of the benefits of the program in terms of opening doors and career advancement. Thank you very much. So we're going to be hearing a bit more about uh, SIPS and its international mark that it's making. And we're going to be hearing now from Ms. Mandy Wong. Uh, Ms. Mandy Wong joined SIPS in September uh, 2020 and plays a very key role in the development of SIPS across the Americas. Mandy is based out of SIPS Americas headquarters in uh, Chicago. And prior to joining SIPS, uh, Mandy would have worked in association management, overseeing membership operations of associations in the lumber and pension industries. Her main role is to provide support to existing SIPS members, uh, work strategically with volunteers to establish regional SIPS chapters and build membership. She's also responsible for uh, creating, engaging, and valuable events for procurement and supply chain professionals in the Western Hemisphere. So we're now gonna be hearing from Mandy as she uh, presents her remarks about SIPS. Mandy, welcome. Hi, Kian. Thank you for the introduction and thank you everyone for having me here today. Um, I'm very proud to be part of SIPS, even though I've only been with the organization for uh, just over a year now uh, since I joined just last September. Um, over the year, uh, SIPS has grown tremendously since I've been with them, not even just North America, but um, internationally as well. Um, so just the basics about SIP. Um, so SIPS is based out of uh, Stanford in UK, out just outside of London, and um, our America's headquarters, as Keon mentioned, is located in Chicago, where I am located also. 
Um, so what SIPS does really is we set the global standard for procurement and supply management. Um, we we set the benchmark for you know what what professionals should be achieving in their roles, and we have offices globally. Um, so our our global standard is used um, worldwide. In addition to our headquarters, our regional headquarters in the U.S. and our global headquarters in the U.K., we also have satellite offices in Ghana, South Africa, Istanbul, Dubai, Singapore, and Melbourne. Um, we work with both public and private sector organizations from raising their standards that they currently have to making sure that they're in compliance with uh, different ethical principles, as well as improving delivery results that they're, uh, they're needing. Uh, we also offer a variety of levels of memberships that fits the different needs of individuals. So if you have, um, you know, if you're going through the education training for the qualification and you're working full time, you only have a couple of hours to spare each week, you can go at your own pace. Um, and, you know, if you're not ready to jump into the qualifications, um, most of you here are ready to jump into the qualifications, otherwise you wouldn't be joining us on this call. Um, but we do have uh, different levels of qualifications too, um, so that you can kind of determine where you feel most comfortable starting at and where you are aiming to go. And so one of the things that I was asked to um, talk about is uh, some of the benefits to having SIPs um, kind of aid in developing economies. And I think Trina did a really good job providing her experience with that because I think, um, you know, from, from a SIPs corporate standpoint, I can't say something, but it makes the most sense and it's more valuable when um, someone has gone through that experience and can share their, you know, their thoughts and experience and feelings on how that has helped them and their colleagues and in their local economy, right? Um, but we have a lot of companies that we've worked with um, are really interested in just raising the overall quality of training and development for the individuals that they are bringing in. And SIPS is able to do that uh, because we do have a wealth of quality knowledge that meet those needs. And one of the things that Trina mentioned is, um, I think she mentioned that, you know, we have several different sectors that we're all kind of have our own individual focuses on, but SIPS really has a good uh, wide reach across several different industries um, from oil and gas to renewables to, you know, a variety of different industries that you can make, uh, you can find on our website. Um, but I think the other piece that also really benefits developing economies is that sometimes it can feel like once you've gone through the program, um, you're on your own, but SIPS is always going to be here. Um, you know, once you're a part of SIPS, there's always going to be resources available for you, regardless of if you've already completed your SIPS training and you just need a refresher on a topic that, um, you know, you forgot something about. And so, um, one of the pieces that has been really beneficial is that uh, with the MSIP qualifications that some of you may earn at the end of your learning journey, um, uh, similar to what Trina um, did, she can apply that MSIP qualification as an addition to her university accreditation. But in some cases, um, there are organizations that are recognizing the MSIP as a standalone accreditation accreditation um, that is equivalent to a university degree. And so I think that's something that's very valuable to a lot of um, some of the developing uh, economies that SIPS has influence and uh, uh, opportunities in helping. And for this year, we've had a very, uh, as, as with everyone, SIPS has gone through a lot, um, but one of the things that we're very proud of producing this year so far is our salary survey guide. Um, because of our global reach, we are able to conduct a procurement salary uh, survey guide with data collected from uh, internationally, uh, especially in the regions that we have a large presence in. So specifically the UK, Australia, New Zealand, 
South Africa, uh, MENA, which is Middle East, North Africa, North America, and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So for this, for example, this year, our salary guide found that um, there was a growth in procurement salaries overall in North America by 4.6%. Um, the study also revealed that in North America, 32% uh, of employers are starting to request MSIPs for, um, for individuals who are studying towards MSIPs when they're recruiting new employees, um, which is 32%, you think, oh, wow, that's not too many, but compare that to um, Sub-Sahara Africa, where 79% of employers are requesting that their employees recruited have or are in the process of earning their MSIPs. Um, it kind of puts into perspective how valuable um, the MSIPs accreditation can be. Um, and in that, in that respect, it's 66% in the Middle East and North Africa for the requirement of the MSIPs. Um, if you're looking for more data from the 2021 uh, study, they can be found on the SIPs uh, website. They have plenty more information beyond um, salaries and um, contains information on career, career growth um, outlooks and et cetera. And so I can share that link in the chat box uh, shortly. Um, speaking of internationally, um, our international reach, we, because we are a global organization, our qualifications are recognized worldwide. So even if you've earned your MSIPs in the Americas, it would still be recognized in the other regions of the world. Um, and for, for many of the regions, having the SIPs qualifications, um, especially the MSIPs, can lead to higher salaries. Uh, so it is 12% increase uh, in Europe overall, 20% uh, in New Zealand, 28% in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, 34% in South Africa, and 82% in MENA. And so this kind of relates back to how in uh, certain regions, employers do favor applicants uh, who hold SIPs qualification. Now, some of the benefits of uh, becoming a member once you've earned your SIPs qualifications or just being a member as a student, um, as you're going through the program, um, support for continuing professional development, um, networking opportunities, and the knowledge resources are the main three benefits that I share with anyone who's looking to learn more about what SIPS really offers. Um, what one of the um, knowledge resources that we have is the supply management digital publication, which gets updated by uh, industry professionals. Uh, daily, week to week, um, and the Knowledge Hub online that we have on the SIPS website also houses a variety of information and reference points for uh, a variety of topics that is applicable to uh, different regions. Um, the benefit that I am most personally in, um, excited about always is the networking opportunities. Um, as I mentioned earlier, SIPS is growing quickly in the Americas, and that is one of the reasons why I joined the SIPS team. Um, we have a lot of great events and opportunities that are already in progress, and others that are in the development stages. And so um, in terms of what I do is uh, helping the Americas. So one of the things that we've done already is a start up a local chapter in New England, um, of the New England region of the US. And so through that chapter, uh, just last week, we were able to host a golf scholarship event where we granted four uh, college students in the U.S. Uh, scholarships for their college tuition. Um, and so, you know, there are opportunities like that that you can give back. Um, there are opportunities to join chapters. Um, Trina and I have been on several calls together about um, the growth of the Caribbean region. And so, um, for example, the Trinidad and Tobago chapter has recently expanded and is in the progress of kind of providing more resources and support to the overall Caribbean area. So the Trinidad and Tobago SIPS branch is now transforming into the Caribbean chapter for SIPS. And so through expansions like that, members and volunteers have the opportunity to meet uh, other individuals 
from their local regions, as well as get involved and develop their leadership skills. And, you know, beyond just the professional, they can say outside of their, their career role, they can say, you know, I've spent time and energy in helping develop um, and help the industry in my region to help connect others as well. And so um, with the networking opportunities, we're also growing in uh, the New York area in the US as well as developing a Canada chapter. And as I mentioned, uh, we are growing kind of everywhere. So if you are um, if you are ever interested in starting a chapter in Guyana, let me know, uh, reach out to me and I'm happy to work with you um, and our SIP headquarters team to make sure that we can get a nice SIP community set up for you, um, everyone in your region. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mandy. That was definitely, you know, some really, really good information pertaining to uh, where SIPS is across the world. And it's really good to hear how widespread it is, um, you know, from its main office in England to regional offices, and of course, satellite offices in countries like Guyana, South America, Istanbul, and the others that you mentioned. For the persons listening on the call, I'm seeing some interactions happening in the chat as well, uh, some questions being asked and responses being given to them. That really touches on what are the opportunities, uh, apart from the benefits that you listed, uh, for persons who are going to become MSIFs qualified? So I know for sure that persons are listening, they're taking notes because the interaction in the chat is really, really uh, going on. At this particular time, we are going to be opening the room to questions. Of persons, apart from in the chat, if you have uh, any questions or comments that you would like to share, uh, we want to do this in the most respectful and professional manner so you can unmute and signal your intention and you will be acknowledged so that you can ask your questions and this will be for the benefit of everyone who is on the call. And of course, I have some questions as well that I am um, more than willing to ask. Uh, so we are going to be uh, hearing from the room uh, today. So the floor is now open for anyone, the virtual floor, for anyone who has any questions that or question or questions that they would like to ask the team, they are more than willing to answer it uh, at this point in time. So let's go. If you like to raise your hand so that you can be acknowledged, that is also another approach. I am scanning the chat as we speak. All right, while some persons are building up the courage and the confidence to unmute and ask their question, I am going to get the ball rolling because I really have uh, some burning, burning questions that I would love for uh, the team to respond to. And any member of the team can uh, determine who's going to take uh, the rain or the rain to answer the question. And I'm going to start with my first question, uh, and it's really pertaining to the energy sector. So, to the team, uh, with the advent of the new energy sector here in Guyana, um, how do you see the role of uh, SIPs in our energy industry, if you can get a bit more specific, and being able to support uh, these companies? that are involved in this sector. So any member of the team can volunteer to take this on. Trina, since you are in that sector, you can give us your experience. Oh, Ian, can you just repeat the question one more time? The internet kind of just sure. flips it. Sure, Trina, not a problem. So I know you did touch on it a bit, but if you can dive into it a bit more. So with our new energy sector here in Guyana, how do you really see the role of SIPs within this particular industry and being able to support um, the companies or the organizations within that industry uh, without hope to get them involved, to get involved with those companies? Okay, so for 
um, starters, like Manu was saying um, before, most of the roles I'm sure that's going to be advertised, especially with multinationals now playing in that space. And there are a lot of relocation of uh, large energy uh, companies, for example, some Beijing, the Adiburton, um, Exxon is there. We've seen, you know, we're seeing a lot of companies migrating into the space now and making it um, one of the new energy hubs in the Caribbean. So we are going to see the request for um, SIPs, which is an international requirement, as you all are aware, um, the most recognized international re uh, requirement for hiring um, procurement and supply chain business. So if you want to be able to work in that field, um, like myself, when I first started my career, there are a lot of us that may have been doing supply chain and procurement type um, activities on our day-to-day -day, um, jobs, but what we don't have is the actual certification. And um, it one may think, um, as I started off by saying that, you know, you're involved in it and you think you're, you're well on your way to being a professional, but only when you go through the SIPs program, you realize how much more there is to learn. So one is ensuring that you're qualified. Um, like I say, I don't believe in luck. It's opportunity. And you have to be prepared for when the opportunity arises. So from your own personal career development, it's up to each individual to decide and make that, make that leap and that decision so that when the jobs open up, you have the qualification. You have, if you're already in the field, you have a head start because you have the practice while you study, which is going to make it um, a whole lot easier for you. And um, you'll be able to compete um, without being, and without having the certification and the qualification, you won't be able to play in that space. So, you know, it's, it's self-development and taking ownership of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trina. And I, Anybody else have any questions coming online? Uh, let me just make sure that I check the chat. I have one. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I came in a bit late. So I'm just curious about the duration of the course and the, um, the class attached to it. Thank you. Sure. Shall I go ahead? Hi, um, yes, Ms. Ali. Um, so we have different levels and we will have to decide based on your, your experience um, in the field, as well as the level of education, which, which level you're coming at. So that we offer level two, three and four, which are the three entry levels. The highest level that you can that is level four, but that would require that you have some academic background as well as some experience working in the field. Um, the, 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 the prices of the charge, again, are really based on the, on the number of credits in each course. So for example, at the level two, um, we are charging 39,000 Guyanese dollars um, for the course. The first course is expected, which is level two. Um, that is expected to take a maximum of nine months to complete, um, really depending on whether you wish to complete it uh, earlier, arrangements could be made for that. But it's really three terms um, and one course in the first term, then two courses followed by two courses again in the third term. So we're looking at three terms um, at about three months each. And in those three months, what it includes, it includes the tuition, um, preparations for exams, and as a value added, um, one of the things that we, we didn't mention, but we could now is a good opportunity to mention it. Uh, while I know a lot of the other institutions um, and other types of program do charge for exam preparations. Um, that is a value added that we are giving. So we want to ensure that once you engage in this program, that there's um, a level of success, and that at the end of it, you come out um, passing the examination so that it makes you more marketable. Um, so we are looking at $39,000 per course. And in the first level, which is level two, there are five courses spread over three terms. I hope that answers the question, uh, Mr. Ali. Yeah, thank you. And thank you very much for that question, Ms. Ali. I'm seeing in the chat as well uh, from Jerry is asking if there are any scholarships uh, available 
So thank you for responding, Chris, uh, indicating that it can be uh, considered. Any other question coming from our audience today? Patrick has his hands up. Hi, yes, I do have one question. I see you mentioned the beginning levels of three, four, two, three, and four. Um, will Starbucks be offering the levels five and six at any point in time? Considering um, I'm going, I'm looking to start this with you guys probably in January and coming with at least 10 years of experience in procurement and just having completed my EMB at UWE. Um, I'm, this is basically my specialization field that I would then fall into do complete levels five and six and then do the specialized diploma. Yes, we are planning to, um, Patrick, thanks for the question. Uh, what is why we didn't offer five and six as yet is because we realized that there were not many people in Guyana that will reach those levels and we need to take a cohort through uh, level four before we started the level five. So this is why it's not offered at the moment. So once we get through that nine months and we have that cohort that completes the level four, we'll be able to do five and six because the cohorts will roll forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for those responses and the questions of Patrick. I think we have another question that is coming in. I got one directly that is asking, what are the requirements uh, for the course? So that was all the question asked. So I'm not uh, specific, it's gonna be to level two, but maybe you can share something around what would be some of the requirements for someone who would like to do this particular program. Jai? Okay, sure, uh, Chris. Um, the level two will be the first level, so um, it doesn't require any 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 uh, background experience um, or, or qualification in the field. Um, so that, for example, if someone comes out of secondary school, if someone wants to leave their 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 current um, industry and enter supply chain, um, then that level is, uh, will will obviously be the best fit. Um, for the level three, it does require some level of work experience. And when you look at the requirements, and even on your SIPS website, you will see some of those things that, that the qualifications and the entry levels are really based on how much experience you have in the field and your level of education. So someone who may have advanced level, um, whether it be at Cambridge or CXC, um, that may put you, and you may have some work experience, that will put you at level three. Um, level four is really the highest level you can enter. And that is only question that uh, Patrick has asked that regardless of the, 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 the experience that they may have, um, with only level four, you cannot enter level five and six. And that is why we have done level two, three, and four um, that cover the whole entry level. And based on where you are in terms of the experience and in terms of the education, that will determine the point at which you, you enter. So it is a little difficult to just to sit here and say that, um, to just give an answer like that. But what I can say for certainty, if you have, if you don't have the experience in um, procurement, you you are you are new to the field, then definitely you're going to, you're going to, you're going to enter at level two. Even if you may have a degree, but you may not, not have the experience, while you may make a case to enter level two, it may be difficult because some of the foundation work, um, and understanding of the field and the frameworks and all of those things may not be there. What we're encouraging though is that once you go to the website and you fill out the registration form, uh, we'll have a meeting with with all our uh, interested students and based on that meeting and when we do our own assessment we'll of course do some consultation maybe with members of SIPS um, and amongst ourselves and the academic team and in so doing we will decide um, based on your interests and your qualification where you fit and what is going to be the best um, level for you to enter. Thank you, thank you very much for that response. I'm seeing another question that is coming in. So the question that they're asking, well, there are two questions that I'm seeing on the board. One, someone is asking, what is the average monthly salary for someone uh, more likely between levels two to four, which means if they have those qualifications, what is the expected average monthly salary? I'm not sure if you guys may be able to answer that question for, for them. And then the second question comes out, would be does each level cost 20, well, this would have been 39,000 just to correct that. 39,000 for each of the nine months or is the money for just a per semester? 
And if one starts level four, what is the duration? So who's gonna take the first question? What is the average monthly salary for someone who may have the level two to four qualifications? So I'll, I'll do the first one, um, Keon, based on, um, we haven't found a SIPs professional in Guyana. Um, so maybe somebody here knows somebody, but I think I've seen in the jobs that are advertising for procurement uh, personnel and even assistants, they're asking for MBAs. And that tells you the level um, or the level of salary or the level of professional that they're looking for. And an MBA, the pay would be anywhere between probably from $500,000 to probably a million dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And so you can address the yeah. other questions. Correct. Yes, yeah, so um, again, it, the, that's a question on, on the fees, right? So it is $39,000 um, per course. And as I mentioned in the first level, there are, there are five courses. I believe in the second level, they are the same thing. The only thing that is going to vary um, in the third level, so that for level one, for level two and three, um, it is 39,000 Guyanese for each of the course. There are five courses each. Um, for the level Sorry, four. Sorry, six in level five. Level three. Level three. Sorry. So that is six courses. But for the level four, there are eight courses. And the six credit courses are going to be 39,000 um, Guyanese dollars also. However, um, the first course and the last course in level four are actually 12 credit courses. And for those, those the, the fee is going to be, I believe, it's going to be less than double the amount. Um, for, for W on the credit. I can't tell you the exact amount, but once you go to the, the website and there's your registration, um, our program administrator, Kanifa, is going to reach out to you. Uh, we have all of the fees uh, stated, so you're going to get that fee sheet, as well as you're going to see every trimester and the courses that are offered for each trimester. So that the full details will be provided to you uh, once you reach out to us. I don't want to give you figures here, and uh, they're inaccurate, but what I can tell you is that it is 39,000, um, for each three or six credit course, but for level four, um, for the first course and the last out of the eight, so that's two out of eight, the fees are going to be higher simply because those are 12 credit courses, as well as the nature of the assessment is going to be different. Um, while you have the multiple choice type questions for the three and six credit, um, for the 12 credit courses, those are really SA type um, exams, so that you will notice a difference for those. Thank you. Thank you very much for responding to that particular question and bringing the clarity on the investment uh, for the qualifications, and that is 39,000 Ghana dollars per course uh, for each of the courses you have to do for each level. Due in the interest of time, we're gonna take one more question that I saw just came in in the chat. And while that is happening, I would encourage the participants on the call. We would love to hear your feedback uh, this afternoon. We have a link to an evaluation form, if you can click on that link and uh, oblige us by filling out that form, we'll really, really appreciate it. And the final question that we're gonna take for today comes from uh, Michael and he is asking, uh, is there a scheduled commencement date for the courses uh, here in Guyana? And he's asking how does payment for the courses go and could it be paid by module or it needs to be paid for the entire semester. All right, I'm seeing Chris is giving some responses. So Chris, you just want yes, to- Yes, we expect to start in October. Yeah. Thanks, Gian, sorry. We expect to start in October and the fees can be, will be paid per subject that you're doing, per course that you're doing. Um, so if you opt to do one, you pay for that one. If you opt to do two, you pay for the two. Um, we are willing to offer also, you pay by the month, so the course will run over three months. So you will offer a payment plan for each month. So that, that's an option too. We know that you know finding every money, the money up front can be difficult sometimes. So we're willing to work with that option too and offer that option. Thank you. This is definitely making the SIPS qualification really, really uh, affordable and to meet the investment uh, threshold of the persons who are willing to get a qualification. I don't think you can get it better than that, where you're allowed to pay per course. In addition, you have a monthly payment plan. So I really don't see any uh, speed harms with the persons who may want to get a qualification taking uh, the steps necessary to get that done. So kindly fill out your evaluation forms. And of course, 
uh, for those persons who like to get registered, you can always reach out to uh, Kenny for you will see some registration information in just a few minutes. And as we go today, I would just like to share a quick video uh, with you so that you can just have a bit more uh, information as it pertains to SIPs. So there you go. Thank you guys very much for joining us uh, during your lunch hour for this webinar as we learned a bit more about the SIPS qualification. And of course, for those persons who are looking to uh, get registered for the program, you, by filling out the evaluation forms, you'll have your information that we can reach out to you or you can call 223 and uh, Kenny will be more than happy to provide you with information on how you can get registered. I would like to say a special thank you to all of our speakers today, uh, Dr. Vishnu Durga, uh, Chris Apana, we have Trina, uh, we had uh, Ms. Mandy Wong, uh, we had Ms. Maharaj presenting, uh, answering questions as well. It has been an absolute pleasure um, hearing from you guys and of course, educating me on uh, SIPs and the benefits of the qualification, especially with our rising industry. On that note, I would like to wish you a pleasant good afternoon and do enjoy the rest of your day. Continue to be safe and of course, protect yourself against the novel coronavirus. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.